it's just such a reminder of the kindness of God. I saw the kindness of God in the kindness of Bianca in that time. Because again, it just it doesn't make sense. She didn't have to she didn't have to do it. If you weren't here for part one, hi, I'm Gaby. I also go by Gabrielle. I actually should say that the other way around. My name is Gabrielle and I go by Gaby. And welcome to part two of what happened in my world in 2022. What the heck happened in 2022? This part is where I talk about um, moving out of my amazing, awesome, so in love with it apartment. Um, and having absolutely no plan. I moved out without a single plan. Yeah, I, so my life was on fire basically around that time um, and I was just getting by day to day. And so I knew my lease was ending at the end of September, but it felt so overwhelming to figure out where to go. I was grieving a lot of things at that time, but also grieving having to leave my apartment because I just thought I would stay there until I got married. And so to have to leave and also I wasn't getting married and it just was like, I'm devastated. I don't know how to process this. So I just chose not to. <laughs> I mean, simple as that. I just was like, okay, I'm not gonna process this. It's getting dark outside. Let me turn my uh, other light on so you all can still see me. There we go, okay. So your girl was overwhelmed and it was just too much to try to figure out. So I just did it. And I was like, Lord, you're gonna have to figure it out. <laughs> You know how you talk cocky to God when you got an attitude and you're going through something? You'd be like, if you don't figure it out, well, it won't be figured out. I'm going to just be out here in these streets. And I was okay with that. I will, I will be out here in these streets. I'm mad at life, so I will pitch a tent outside. I knew God was going to work it out, but I wasn't sure exactly how. Um, so I just kept moving through. I started having conversations about moving back in with my parents. Uh, if you know, I'm from Akron, Ohio. So... Um, but I currently live in Columbus, so that would have been basically a two hour commute uh, for work and anything else. I don't usually go into the office, so it wouldn't have been impossible, but I'm also very involved in my church and um, my church is a huge part of my healing journey and just developing me at this age and at this time. And so it just was like, for me to be separated from my church and separated from those relationships was not a good idea. It wasn't, but I felt like it was another kind of stick in the mud, I'm mad kind of response. It's like, I know this doesn't make sense, but I'm about to move home because I feel like I've kind of hit, not rock bottom, but it felt like rock bottom. You know, it was like, I don't wanna have to deal with this. Um, I know it's an easy answer to just move home with my parents save my money and figure out what I'm going to do. I also had this desire and passion to buy a house, but I had no idea how to make that happen. It felt very overwhelming and scary to even consider the idea of buying a house. At the time, your girl was not financially anything. I've always been like pretty good with money as far as like I pay my bills on time, you know, credit's good, that kind of a thing. But having a deep savings account, no. Like 10 years of college will, Baby, unless you're just finessing and making things shake, that savings account is like on a zero. Whereas, you know, I'm watching people build lives and families and homes and I'm like, wow, really? Okay. I knew I wanted to buy a house, but I knew I wasn't ready. So it was like, okay, I guess I'm going to live with my parents. And I actually had a friend. At the time, she was literally just an acquaintance. Like, we were cool, we knew each other from church, we had seen each other, um, had conversations before. I'm trying to think of like, how we actually met met. I don't know if I remember. Isn't that so weird when you like, don't even remember how you got to know somebody? I don't know, but this was very soon after the engagement had ended and I had not shared it yet. And I ran into her in a Target. And so I was like, hey, you know, we're, we're chatting it up. And um, she goes to look at my hand and she's like, you know, congratulations and kind of had a moment and she goes to look at my hand she's like, cause that'll tell it baby when the ring ain't on, they be like, excuse me, huh? I kind of was just like, you know, yeah, no. She was like, oh, 
she's like sounds like you might need a wine night <laughs> like literally that was just her response of like i don't need to know details you got to tell me nothing how about this wine and how about like tonight or tomorrow night and i was like mm -hmm, sounds like a plan which again is kind of funny because we weren't like besties like we weren't we didn't have this like you know super heavy friendship and it made sense for us to like have a wine night i mean it was cool to have a wine night but it was like I don't know, we had just never hung out like that. So she invited me over. I don't remember if it was that night or the following night. It might have been the following night. And y'all, talk about like having a connection with somebody off the bat and feeling like you've known them your entire life. Like the way she cared for me that night was, like it just didn't make sense. Like that's how I feel about all of this story is like it doesn't make sense the way she cared for me when she literally could have been like you're just another person that i know from church like i don't have to like she didn't have to step out of her way she didn't have to care like to this day i want to I be like why did you why did you care like thank you <laughs> thank you for caring but i don't i don't know other than the holy spirit we know how he works and coordinates and makes sure everything is what it should be at the right time um, so from that connection, um, basically she was, uh, just a friend, um, in a time where I really needed a friend. Around that time, started the conversation, or I brought up the conversation of me moving back home to, um, Akron, and she about cussed me out without cuss words. Actually, BB cussing. <laughs> But she didn't cuss me off for that. She was like, no, you're not going to live in Akron. That's not an option. And I'm like, okay, sis, that's real cute for you to say, but like, where am I finna go in Columbus? And I didn't want to be a burden on anyone. Like, I feel like I could be a, a burden on my parents because they're my parents. They brought me into this world. So if I'm at rock bottom, y'all can let me sleep on your couch because I didn't ask to be here. <laughs> that's how I felt about it. Like, I can go there and just get my life together and not have to feel bad or feel like I need to be paying, you know, oodles and rent or whatever. So I just didn't want to take advantage of a relationship, especially a new relationship. So I just was struggling with this idea of moving in with her. But as the weeks were counting down and I was moving out, it's like, okay, we need to figure something out, sis. Like, you have to go somewhere and Akron is not the option. One day, she just said, like, you can come live with me. And at first it was kind of like a joke. Not that she was joking, like playing with my situation, but it was kind of like, girl, you might as well just live with me. You know, that kind of a talk, like, girl, you know you could just live here. And so after a couple of weeks, I'm like, okay, we joking about this, but my move out date is like in a week. And um, how serious are we about this? Can I come live here? <laughs> So we had a real conversation one night on FaceTime where I was like, okay, I know we've been like, hee hee ha ha, but like, were you serious? You know, is that okay? She's like, girl, I'm dead serious. Come here. I don't want anything from you. Not me about to cry. Get it together. We ain't gonna cry. I'm not about to do this. I cry every video. Y'all sick of me crying. I'm not gonna cry um she was like yeah you can come stay with me like i kid you not she has two young kids and i'm like you know i didn't want to interrupt their routine she has a complete finished basement um that is like so comfy and cozy and it's their playroom and that's where she was saying i can stay and i'm like i can't take the baby's playroom lord jesus i'm gonna just ruin their schedules and their routines and i'm gonna just be in everybody's way so it took some convincing but she was like no i feel like we can do this. I just, I get a feeling we can do this. Which again, makes no sense. Cause what does she have to go off of that I'm a safe person to live with? I don't know. She had been to my apartment one time, so she at least knew I was clean. But it's like, I don't know. That was a step of faith, honestly, on her behalf. Um, so I don't know. The Lord is just, the Lord is kind. The Lord is kind. My friend Trayvon, he and I have been saying that in this season, like the Lord is kind. Moved on with my stuff. Um, I actually, my family friends, Crystal and Ma, I think I've told you guys about them before. Um, my little God sister and God brother are their kids and they have been such a blessing with me being in Columbus and always willing to offer their home as storage or like whatever I need, they always come through. And so I ended up not even being a storage unit. I was looking at putting myself in storage because I knew, okay, this is temporary. I'm not staying with Bianca forever. Like, it's just 
until I figure out what I can do or like save money for a house, like it's temporary. So um, I put all of my things at their place. Um, so I didn't have to pay for a storage unit. Thank you, Jesus. And then um, B not only opened her home, but she was like, you don't have to just come. Like I was prepared to live out of a bag. You understand? Like, listen, I'm just grateful to be here. You know, I'm not being required to pay a whole bunch and like do all this stuff at this house. So I need to be, you know, a fly on the wall. I'm trying to be out the way. My stuff will not be in the way. You see what I'm saying? But again, ah, do not cry. But again, the kindness of her heart was like, you're not just here temporarily. You're not just living on my couch and sleeping on my couch like your family. So I was really sad around that time because y'all know I love to decorate for fall and I knew I was like my decorations were going to storage because I didn't have a place to decorate and she was like girl I love to decorate for the holidays bring your stuff over here so I got to decorate for the holidays for fall and for Christmas like this woman let me put up my whole Christmas tree in her basement like she cleared out literally half the room for me to bring my desk my desk chair because I work from home so I she let me bring all of my stuff that I need for working from home I had some bins that I kept some of my essential clothes in I had a clothing rack in there that she let me um, have to just keep some of the things that I hang up she let me make it a little home for the time that I was there and um it's just such a reminder of the kindness of God. I saw the kindness of God and the kindness of Bianca in that time. Because again, it just it doesn't make sense. She didn't have to. She didn't have to do it. Um, her kids are angels to me. I get that all kids have their things, you know, as they're growing and developing and all whatever. But her kids are angels to me because I don't think at the age of six. In the age of eight, I would have accommodated somebody living in our house, being in my playroom, working, like they would have to come in and be quiet. Um, you know, she would have to have them be quiet if she knew I was on a call and, you know, they would play upstairs in their room instead of coming downstairs. Like the way this family, y'all, uh, her mother who lives literally very close by to her, like the way they all covered me um we cooked dinner together we built legos we you know i got to take the kids to their sports practices and gymnastics and like the way i was not just a, a random tenant in their house but a family member like i've been processing it over time but something about talking it out right now is just like i don't understand Ugh, i don't understand i don't understand other than God is kind and Bianca and her family were just angels at the time that I needed it. Um, I grew a lot of um, really beautiful friendships out of that time period as well as I merged with her family and uh, my church just again just being such a blessing in that meantime. Um, I just felt so loved and upheld when I literally felt like some days my legs were shaking trying to go from moment to moment like they were just there. Um, dang it. I don't know what that period, what this period since June would have looked like without a community like this. Um, so. My friend Trayvon, um, I got to know him. He was another one that like, we knew each other in passing or as acquaintances in church and he became like a brother cousin during that time. And we all literally did life together for the three months. Like, it just reminds me of like the new girl vibe or whatever, of like, you know, friends on kind of hard times, just like, living life together and helping each other and like while some are up and one's down like everybody working together to just get through and have fun and make the most out of life and the way life just be life and like you can still have joy in the midst of that so it's a beautiful period and my sweet babies I feel so bad because I uh, they love the fact that I have a YouTube channel and when they found out they <laughs> they literally thought I was famous y'all 
I don't have the heart to tell them that I'm not actually famous. And so every time I pulled out my camera, they thought, oh gosh, we're going to be on YouTube. Like mind blown. They thought it was the coolest, most amazing thing. And so therefore, um, I would record and I told them that I would get them up and I have so I don't want to say so much footage because I don't remember it being a lot of footage, but I know I took videos of our time together of us doing various things. So to my sweet babies, Eliana and Elijah, this content I'm posting is for you. Highlight our memories and our time together and all the fun things that we got to do with each other. I love you all. I'm excited for you all to see this little portion of my life and everything that was happening once I moved out my apartment and got to live with this amazing family. But you don't want to come say hi? Oh, you're taking shit off. Where are the kitties? Yes, the last one. Hi, YouTube. Hey, what's up? I'm Bianca. It's Bianca. She's actually starting her channel. <laughs> I'm putting it on here so that she has to do it. You guys want to say hi, to YouTube? YouTube! <laughs> Oh, okay, we've been building a Lego since yesterday, right? Yeah. What's the Lego about? Um, about yeah, uh, yeah, go get the. I was gonna say, get the box. This is my family, guys. And we'll show you how far we. Yes. Do you need You want to tell them what is it? Um, it's a construction truck. Yeah. Did you get that? My grandpa. <laughs> For my birthday. Yay. I just had a birthday. And he turns six. Yeah. So we've been building the Lego Let's since take yesterday. Them into the oh, you want to take them in now? Yes. Okay. All right, let's go. I've been trying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating them. Ooh, we got some chips. If I see myself on YouTube, now I know you, you are actually on YouTube, so we might actually, as we might actually be on, we to be on real YouTube. Oh, hi, Poppy. Okay, he said it's my debut. They're gonna need YouTube. to um, parent involvement. Um, the boy accidentally How do you feel? Good. This one's going nuts. All right. <laughs> That's so cool. Here's the picture. Cause I'm a bubble. Be careful. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Tell them where we are. We're at, at the farmers market. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then, then we're gonna. gonna and then we're going to the farm. And then we're going to the So after the market, oh, we're going to um, to apple picking. Why am I upside down?
That's good. You want to hold it? Or you want to put it in? I'm going to put it in. If we find it. Y'all haven't done a corn maze since I was about 10, so I'm not leading the group because we may end up lost. How confident are you? Very. <laughs> oh, I was the corn maze master. Ooh. everyone. I never thought I'd be on YouTube in my um, headscarf, but here we are because we're making pumpkin spice um, waffles. And pumpkin spice? My mom will let me have that. Oh, Lige. <laughs> we also have Lige bringing the, the October, <laughs> October energy with his Halloween costume. Okay, you're gonna get that dirty while we cook. Yo, he, and he just got it. I, I got, got this awesome yeah. pumpkin waffle maker yeah. from. It's fine uh, if I get this dirty. I'm imagining I'm not wearing place. this for Halloween. Okay. It's that for dress Do you dress think your mom's up. gonna want you to have that on when she comes yeah. downstairs? Yeah. Stairs? Ooh. Okay. This is so to put to my clothes. This is to put to my clothes. Oh, okay. Hi. Um, I lost that too. Pumpkin spice. Yeah, Be careful. Don't drop it. No, oh, no, 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 no. We're doing one cup. <laughs> one cup? Dad. One cup. How about I pour? I pour into your cup. Eliana, go get on your house okay. and cost. Dump it. No. Mm, that smells so good. We yes. might need some for later. Okay, can somebody get me a small bowl? Can you get yeah. me a small bowl? together. How did we get here, Bianca? How did we get to this moment? Because we were just huh? back. We were listening to music now. Trayvon's very focused. We were doing right. Backstreet Boys. And oh, gosh. <laughs> oh. Okay, there we go. And then come back and stand strong. 
We go from there. Yeah, reach with your right hand. Okay. Your right hand. And then bring your arms up. And then your right, your Make left. Your come through. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go, here we go. Okay. All in this together. All in this So we're all in this together? Do you know? I feel like I remember this. <laughs> Five, six, How do you know all the sets? Wild. Cat. Cat. I see you. Yeah, you, you really got it. I've broken a sweat. <laughs> I've broken a sweat. Hi, everyone. It's been a couple days. Hey. Hey. Why is it so dark? There's an overcast. It's actually a rather gloomy gloomy day. I don't think that's good. <laughs> <laughs> we are in line to pick up the kids from school. And we had Brasco for lunch. She didn't eat hers. Look at this. Her box is all heavy. I would just like y'all to know. I'm going to finish it when I get home. I would just like y'all to know that I smashed. I'm going to finish it when we get home. As you should talk to them about like why the heck did you let me come live in your house? Why? Yes. <laughs> Did I have an option? What? <laughs> She's gonna lie to you all? <laughs> this was her idea. It was. I just feel like it was necessary. It's, you know, God told me to do it. I have the space, I have the ability, and it's been such a blessing. And oh. I don't talk about it because I'm gonna cry, but I'm gonna be sad when you leave. And yeah, I've got to have it. I was literally just. Here's the tears. Oh fun. no, Bianca! <laughs> One thing about me, she's gonna cry at the drop of a hat. But they think of me as this because every video I post, pretty much, I'm always crying. Yeah, me too. So she fits right in. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was just looking at houses the other day, okay? I literally was just scanning on Google. There was no official statement. I didn't even let my realtor know. So there's the light. Hello, light. Join us. Um. But yeah, I was literally just scrolling, so then in the morning I was like, well, let me show her the house that I was looking at. Y'all, she starts crying. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> so mind you, I've only been here five weeks, I think. I am. Even but my I'm mom in the family. Says, my mom's like, she's not leaving. Like, don't <laughs> My kids were fighting, and instead of me going up and yelling at them last night, she goes upstairs all calmly, like, "Hey guys, it's bedtime." And it worked out just fine. And when I went up there, they were like, "We can't go to sleep. We're not tired." I was like, "If you go to sleep," I was like, "Whisper." I was like, "If you go to sleep, and close, or if you lay down, and you close your eyes like this, then you'll fall asleep." And they were like, "Okay." So they went like this. <laughs> then I came back to empty the trash. They were. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> so yes, we're here to pick them up from school, which is funny because this is the first time I've picked up with you. Yeah. Since I've lived there, I'm always working. But today, okay. I said screw the work because it was making me emotional. <laughs> so mm -hmm. instead, we went and got food. Yeah, and paint. And went to yes, we went to Home Depot. Okay, tell them Home Development Project. So we're going to paint. We're going to do a new backsplash, and we didn't buy the backsplash, right? No, we didn't get the backsplash. We'll, we'll we'll come back when the kids get in the car because they think they're famous now that <laughs> they're on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Hello, Hello, Hi guys. Hello, hi. <laughs> Did she say uh oh? What's up? I got ten. Let's get it. Awesome. Yeah. That would make it noise. Uh -huh. <laughs> it actually walks. It actually walks? Yeah, they talk. Okay. Yeah, oh. your mom was playing with Baby Yoda today. I was playing with them. She, she, was, terror <laughs> she was terrorizing me with Baby Yoda. <laughs> Something about Nate Juan. Uh oh. No. Put her out there. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was my friend's Nate birthday. Nate Juan. Okay, so I got I'm a drawing thing. I'm gonna show you. Uh, oh my! Okay, so so this is the pen I got. And 
And this is the new pen. To do it he doesn't need our processes and programs he doesn't need our outline and 12 points he doesn't need our opinion or our perspective if he wants to do it if he's ordained it for you he's going to do 